Hi, welcome into my studio and on this video I'm going to give you a brief overview of how I drew this uh, very detailed snow leopard in pastels. Now if you're looking for a real detailed four hour or five hour version of this, if you go over to my Patreon channel, it's all there as a video series. And that's on the $9 level. Okay, so here's my layout. I've got pastel matte paper, I've got my drawing transferred on there, and the darker areas, the spots, the markings, I've put those in with gouache paint. And the reason I did that, I don't want a lot of black and dark pastel hanging around on the paper by blocking them in at this stage, but it's important for me to know where those markings are. So gouache uh, just keeps the markings in place without any contamination from pastel at all. Now I love to use pan pastels to block in a drawing to do the initial uh, under drawing. It's really fast, really effective and you can get a, a nice solid under drawing done very quickly with pan pastels. And I'm mixing my colours just on some regular printer paper. Here I've started to block in the eye, the dark, some of the dark elements and then I'm using soft pastel sticks to build up and refine some of that fur colour and tone. When I'm doing smaller areas, even at this stage, I generally switch over to pastel pencils. So you can use soft pastels, uh, pastel sticks or pastel pencils all together. They don't have to be done in any particular order. Although I generally use the pans and the soft ones for the underlayers. And as you can see here, I'm switching over more to the pencils and the, the harder sticks to start blocking in the texture and basically the um, shadow areas in between the lighter fur tones. Here I've switched back to pan pastels to block in more of that under layer and then going in with the pencils to put the markings back in place and don't forget the markings actually describe or show the shape the form of the subject so it's important to get those correct then using a hard pastel stick or a pastel pencil then to start to get some of the texture in place and remember the lighter tones the real details will come on top of these under layers so that's why it's always a little bit darker than the final result you can see i'm texturizing over the nose, building up layer upon layer so it's not the finished product yet in any area. I'll keep refining it and build and add in lighter and lighter areas on top. Even in areas we would assume as white around the muzzle or the chin, really study your reference photos because that's generally where you're going to see lots of bounce light, especially in the shadow areas and usually some greyed out tones or even blue. Here I'm putting in that background again just so as you can see I can soften the edges. I don't want rigid hard edges which would give a cut out appearance. Now the body is quite complicated. I want to keep it nice and soft, slightly out of focus so all of the attention goes onto the face and the eyes. So I did a lot of the work with first pan pastels and then soft pastels on top and didn't do very much in the line of real detailing on there to keep that soft effect and also similar on the under body and the leg too. And with pans you can go as detailed as you want. If you want to keep going to smaller tools and build in the layers you can get a really nice detailed effect as well. Here I'm adding some more of that texture, although it's important to notice that on big cats especially, usually there's lots of areas that are really quite soft, so you want to blend those out with your fingers. You don't want every area to have the same appearance of fur texture. Now I've started adding more detail, more accurate colours, building layer upon layer. And because I'm using pan pastel paper, I can do that layering with lots of other papers they really won't take um, layer after layer. They'll start smudging and everything starts blending together. And when you're doing real detail, especially things like fur, you really want to be able to get that layer in. Now normally I'm working a darker layer underneath 
and then gradually go in lighter on top. And that's just the same way as I would do it with oil painting. And you can see how I'm using um, the direction of the fur as well to add, add a bit of randomness there. I'm making sure all my fur marks are not rigid and all in one line like a picket fence because it's very easy for the brain to want to organize like that. Here I'm adding some of the darker elements first. And then you can see I'm starting to come in with lighter pastel pencils. And I can also see how well they layer on top and I can really create some very fine detail. Gradually going lighter and lighter and then at the end coming back in and re-establishing some of the darker darks that could have got a little bit muddied. As I said, I go into really great detail on my Patreon cha channel with uh, this video in particular. It's really very in-depth. So same process with the muzzle and the chin. Getting the dark markings in first and gradually building in the lighter layers. And here you can see the softer area under the chin that I was working on. Then once everything is covered, I gradually begin to refine the whole of the paper because I can really judge one area next to another. And you can see how many pastels I've got on the right hand side and that's just a small selection. Now I'm starting to really refine bounce light and starting to get the background in a bit more as well. For the background, soft pastels are the best alternative. That's where you can really start to blend out very easily. And you can also see why, because that background is so light, why I've, I chose to save putting that background in for the last, uh, as the last job. Here I'm really punching up the blacks getting that background in blending it with my finger then I can overlay those fine hairs and also the whiskers on top of them and then the final stage of those little details the whiskers black whiskers white whiskers and then the final details If you're looking for even more great art sources, I've really got you covered. First off, I've got a Patreon channel. It's been going well over a year or so, packed with around about 50 or more videos and new ones every month. Lots of the videos are uh, many hours long, so you can see they're really, really in-depth. Subjects such as um, turtles, birds, elephants, big cats, you name it, it's on there. So that's my Patreon channel. And also on that Patreon channel, before I go on to something else, I've got a secret Facebook group. So only the members are actually on there. It's the most supportive and friendly Facebook group that I've ever seen. I know I'm biased, but it really is. We've got uh, four or five hundred members on there and they all help each other. So that's a great added bonus that comes free with it. Also, you get line art every month as well and we've just designed a brand new companion website for it so if you've joined other patrons and uh, channels and you found it very very difficult to navigate around we got this free website that comes with it all the videos are now just a single click away couldn't be any easier than it is i've also got my site jasonmorgan.co.uk lots of tutorial videos dvd discs and downloads on there and if you're struggling for reference photos for your art projects, I've got some of those too. I've got 900 plus on my website, wildlifeart-online.com. And they will be copyright free for you. So you can paint and draw from them and sell your work with no copyright worries whatsoever. So hope you like those extra resources and I'll see you all again real soon.